Hello guys, welcome to this video on lines in two and three dimensions. So we are going to look today at how we can use vector equations to uh, to state the line, um, a line in three dimensional space. So previously we've just been looking at a line on a two dimensional plane, so on the Cartesian plane. Um, and so we're going to revise that today and then look at the different notations for that and then extend it into three dimensions. So we'll go through these examples together. Do encourage you to have try and have a read of and comprehend this page here. Um, you may find it a bit confusing, but I think if you've read it, then perhaps this video can, uh, can explain and elucidate some of that for you. So um, we've got the line passing through these two, two points. Firstly, find this line in Cartesian form. So that's y equals mx plus c. Uh, so if we want to find m, we're going to do the slope, which is y2 take y1 on x2 take x1. So it's going to be 5 take 4 on 3 take 2. So we're speeding along this process here. That's 1 on top of 1. Um, so we have a slope of 1, which means the equation in Cartesian form is y equals x plus c. Uh, the value of m is 1. And we can choose any point. Let's say it passes through this one. When x is 2, y is 4. So let's substitute that. We're going to have 4 equals 2 plus c, therefore c equals 2, therefore the equation is y equals x plus 2. Okay, so that's the equation of this line in Cartesian form. Now what we're going to do is write it in parametric form and in vector form. So if we want to write it in parametric or in vector form, we need to say what's the direction in which it's going? Now it has a slope of one on top of one, okay? So what that means is it's going across one and up one, across one and up one. And if we're to denote that as a vector, that has direction one, one, okay? It has a horizontal component of one and a vertical component of one. Um, and it passes through, we can use either of these points. So there's multiple ways of expressing it, but it passes through the coordinate two, four. So here is one way we can describe it. Um, and that is that it is two, four, plus some variable t times the direction. All right. And that there is the vector equation of the line. We've got the coordinate and the point that it passes through. Okay, if we're to describe it in parametric form, it's not a whole lot different, but we're just gonna state x is equal to the number two plus t times one. Okay, so we've taken the x coordinate plus the x direction, and then y is equal to the y coordinate plus the y direction. So we have these different ways of describing the equation of a line. Um, and while this parametric and vector equation isn't particularly useful for, uh, for two dimensions, it is for three. And so that's where we are going to use it predominantly. Okay, so we've explored question one there. We've got the Cartesian equation. We have the uh, vector equation and the parametric equation. Um, and, you know, I've expressed parametric equation like this. Sometimes it can be expressed like this, 2 plus t and then a comma 4 plus uh, 4 plus t, all right, to denote that's the x coordinate and that's the y coordinate of the line. Um, so we've expressed it in all three forms there. All right, let's fence this off and we'll get on to question two. Find the equation of a line that passes through this coordinate and is perpendicular to this vector. Now they haven't expressed what form to find it in, um, so we're not going to find it in Cartesian. We're pretty familiar with that process, I think. Um, if we were to look at this one, I'll just elaborate on that. If it has a direction vector of going across three and down one, okay, what that means is it has a slope of minus one on three. So y goes down one and x goes across three. Um, that's, what, that's the direction of that vector. Now we're asked to find a line perpendicular to this. So that would be the negative reciprocal. That would be three on one. We'd be looking for a line with a slope of three passing through that point. Easy peasy cheesy. Instead, Let's, um, let's look at finding the parametric or vector form of this equation. We'll find both. So we know it passes through this point and we know it has this direction. Um, now we can work the direction out like that, you know, by stating the slope and finding the negative reciprocal. But the other way to work out the direction is that it has to be perpendicular to this vector, three minus one. 
And so that means the dot product of it, whatever it is, has to equal zero. And so what we do is we just swap the coordinates around and sometimes we need to make one of them negative. All right, but here we don't because one of them already is negative. If we do the dot product of this, we're gonna have three times one is three, and then plus minus one times three is minus three, those will cancel to zero. So we know this vector is perpendicular to this vector. Um, and we can derive it in that using that procedure as well. Okay, so we've got the direction of the vector, one, three, and we know it passes through this point, minus one, four. So if we're to write the, um, uh, the, uh, the vector equation of it, we can go, um, yeah, x is equal to, uh, let's write it like this, x, y is equal to, now the uh, x coordinate minus one, four, plus t times the direction. What's the direction of our vector? One, three. All right, so that's the vector form. And then the parametric form is x equals uh, minus one plus t, y equals uh, four plus three t. All right, so that's question two there. We found the equation of the two dimensional line. Now let's crank it up into three dimensions. So the only difference here is that we're introducing that third uh, Z component. So here we have a line parallel to this vector. All that means is that it has the same direction. So for question three, our vector, our line has direction one, two, and minus one. And it passes through this point four, zero, and minus two passes through the point four, zero, and minus two. So if we're gonna write that in, um, in vector form, that's gonna be x, y, z is equal to the coordinate, which is four, zero, minus two, and then plus some variable. We can use t, we can use s, we can use lambda, times the direction of our vector, which is one, two, minus one. Okay, so that is the equation of this line expressed in uh, vector form. Now let's just explain what that means, right? Um, let's say, for instance, this pen is a direction vector and this point is one of the points that it passes through. We can define a three-dimensional line as that direction but passing through that point. So that's a, it's a smart way to do it. This is smart. All right, so let's move on to, we've got the vector form. Let's go for the uh, parametric form. So we would have x is four plus t, we would have y is zero plus two t. So we can just express that as two t. And z is equal to minus two take t. Okay, and then for us to express it in, um, uh, what was the third form? Cartesian form. So we're gonna express a Lot, a three-dimensional line in Cartesian form. The way we do that is we take these variables, x, and we subtract the coordinates from it, and then we divide it by the direction. So for we're gonna have x take four on top of one, being equal to y take zero on top of two, and that is equal to z plus two, z take minus two, z plus two, on top of minus one. And that can be simplified. Um, so for instance, to x take four equal to y on two equal to um, minus z take two. All right, that's the Cartesian equation of this line. So we've got the vector equation, okay? We've got the parametric equation, and then here the Cartesian equation of it. And that shows you how we do that. So there's questions one, two, and three done. Let's move on to four and five. Question four is not too bad. It just says, determine the direction vector of the following lines. So I'm gonna do four here. Um, so if we think of four A, well, that's the coordinate it passes through, and this is the direction. So the direction vector is just minus one, zero, two. If we go to B, the direction vector is gonna be the, um, uh, this, this here is expressed in parametric form. And like, let, why don't we move from parametric form to the vector form so that I can show you it very clearly. What it is, is it's x, y, z is equal to, um, I'm gonna do it underneath, 
two, zero, one. That's the coordinate that it passes through. X is two, the Y value, there's no number there, there's only a T. And um, over here, there's no T, there's only the coordinate. So we've got two, zero, one, and then plus T times, well, what's the direction? We've got three, we've got one, and zero. There's no variable here, no T, no, uh, no coefficient. So that means the direction for vector B, the vector expressed in B, the line expressed in B, sorry, is three, one, zero. The direction vector is the one that we multiply by the variable. That's the direction in which it's headed. This is the coordinate. And then if we look at C, um, you might remember what when we're converting it to Cartesian form, what we do is we subtract the coordinates and divide by the direction vector. Okay, so here we have a direction vector of two, three, and one. Excellent. Um, now, uh, so we did 5a, uh, sorry, we did question four. Let's move on to 5a. Find the equation of the line through these points in parametric form. So we've got two points in space, all right? So two points, and we want to find the line through them. Well, first we need the direction from one to the other. So, and it doesn't matter what order we go in because we're just describing a line. And look, a vector has direction, a line doesn't. A line goes in both directions. So it doesn't matter which way the vector goes, but if I've got points A and B, then the vector between them all right, it's going to be the coordinates of B take the coordinates of A. So we'll perform this. 2 take away 4 minus 2 minus 2 take away 1 minus 3 and 2 take away 0, 2. This is the direction of our vector from A to B and it passes through A. So it passes through this coordinate 4, 1, 0. All right, so that means in parametric form, we're going to have x is equal to 4, take 2t. Remember, this is the direction. y is equal to 1, take 3t. Okay, this is the direction. And z is equal to 0 plus 2t. So we can just write 2t. So that is the, um, that is the equation expressed in parametric form. Okay, part b. Determine four other points that lie on this line. All right, so let's, basically, um, because this is the direction, we can determine points that line up by substituting values of t. Um, so what we'll do, I might just go, we'll just go down the page here, we've got enough room. We're gonna go when t is one, okay? If I have t is one and I'm substituting it into the equation of this line, I'm gonna get four take two, so the x coordinate's gonna be two, the y coordinate is going to be 1 take 3, which is minus 2, and the z coordinate is going to be positive 2. All right, so when t equals 1, this is the coordinate. We can go when t equals 2. All right, if I substitute 2 in, I'm going to have 4 take 4, we'll have 0. 1 take 6, we'll have minus 5, and 2 times 2, 4, etc. So this is how we find coordinates that exist on the line, that the line passes through these coordinates. So we were already given to 4, 1, 0. We know it passes through that coordinate, um, and then we can see it, it, it going on to all the others as well. Okay, so you can do some more there. All right, part C. Determine where this line meets. I had x, y plane, all right? So the x, y plane, if you look at the diagram here, that occurs when z, you notice the z value is zero. But if z is zero, it's just gonna be, um, it's just gonna be this coordinate here, four, one, zero. So we're already given that. So I have changed it to be the y, z plane. So that's the plane made up of the y axes and the z axes, that's this one here. And that occurs when x is zero. And so all we have to do there is take our x coordinate, which is four take two t, and we're gonna go, when is that equal to zero? Oh, that's gonna equal zero when t equals two. All right, so that's when the line is gonna cross the yz plane. What are the coordinates when t is two? 
We've worked it out here already. The coordinates where it crosses the yz plane are 0, minus 5, and 4. Excellent. So that's a good introduction to um, lines in two and three dimensions. So um, hopefully we find this exercise okay. Uh, it's an important exercise to wrap our head around. Let me know if you have any questions.